When I was still a design student, I thought, Hmm, school is going to prepare me for my first full-time job. No, I never thought that because I never thought it was going to be that straightforward. And over time, as I was interning at more places, my experiences confirmed that hypothesis. That was when I saw a huge disparity between what school taught me and what companies in Silicon Valley were looking for. That also explains why I'm here, to pass on that glorious moment of epiphany to you. In this video, we're going to take a look at the gap between school and the real world, the industry, the company that you want to work for. What are they looking for? What are they expecting? And most importantly, why I think schools fail to prepare me for my first full-time design job. Music, intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. To boil everything down to one simple reason, why school can really easily fail me in my interviewing process in Silicon Valley. There is something that I did not learn in school, but it's part of the interview, part of what they expected me to know. Or to rephrase it in another way, how I work on a project in school it's not the same thing as how I work on a project in a company as a UX designer, as a product designer. So if you ask me why you didn't get a job, how come you did not pass the interview? Well, you simply did not know enough because school did not teach you enough. Therefore, technically, it's not your fault. But at the same time, you can really take control of it and fix it yourself if you like. Hence the real question, what is missing in a UX design program in school nowadays? Let's dive right in. As I was reflecting on this topic and doing more research in this area, I realized school did not teach me a lot of things. To keep this video short and sweet, I'm just gonna list three important ones, the three missing pieces, the three elephants in the room that I need to address. Think back your time in school, you were doing your projects, you were designing your favorite product, you do all the research, ideation, prototyping, testing, and then keep going through the iterative process, that is great. However, if it's a solo project, you are the only designer working on this project. Or it's a design project, you will get to work with your classmates, other designer friends on the same project, which in fact sums up the actual problem. Missing piece number one, because you're working by yourself or with other designers, you do not work with software engineers. Because you're not working with them, you don't get to do two main things. Number one, you don't get to hand off assets and two, you don't get to understand technical difficulties. So first one first, as a UX designer or product designer, you are going to produce and design some graphics, some icons, logos, something that will end up going to the product like an app or a website or whatever medium your product is. Let's say it's an app and you design some graphic for it. It's gonna be graphic, text, then after you design a graphic, your job does not stop there. You have a follow-up, you have the handoff process to turn your design into code, to get your design into a real product. So how do you do that? You need to work with an engineer. What does that mean? It means, well, you need to set up a file structure or system for engineers where you will have the source of truth where all your assets will be in. Then the engineers can just go into the same folder to look for or to reference the assets, the image assets, the PNGs, MP4, Lottie, whatever file format it will be, and use it in the app. Aside from the structure, the image assets, for example, itself, could exist in many different sizes. For example, you might need to export your image asset into 1x, 2x, and 3x in size for iOS. For Android, it will be a whole different set of sizing. It will be MH, XXH, XXXH, which kind of means 1x, 1.5x, 2x, 3x, and 4x. I guarantee you when you do a screw project, you are not going to export your assets in those sizes, right? Because you don't need to. You don't need to because you don't work with an engineer. And before you even export it, you need to figure out what is the right file format to export or to choose from and when to choose from. Would you use a PNG for this graphic or would you use an SVG or JPEG? Because in your design file, 
It's the same thing, right? You don't need to think about file format because they all look the same. But in code, they might perform differently because of the image compression, the optimization of the code base, and other things that you don't know about because that is not your area of expertise. Then you need to consult the expert, which will be the engineers or an MP4 versus a Lottie. Which one to pick and when do you use and why? So this will be one of the things you will miss if you don't get to work with an engineer. The second thing, technical difficulties. By working with engineers, you will get to understand how the app architecture works. How do they build the app? What legacy do they use, the different frameworks? And because of those frameworks, it might give different constraints. For example, the constraints on the splash screen, the screen that you will see after you tap into the app. The loading time might be different and also how the app is handling that particular splash screen. And that ties to whether you want to use MP4 or a Lottie animation or even use native code to make your animated design come to life. Let's say your goal is to have a Lottie animation playing as a splash screen. But at the same time, because of how the app is built, the engineers cannot get this in. So in this case, what will you do in the meantime? Another example, the rendering order before this particular screen is rendered on device. The app might not know the length of this text string or the height of this paragraph. So when you try to position something on a screen that is relative to another, you might run into some issue. That means you need to fall back to a different design to account for that. Another one would be timeline or your team is understaffed. So how do you prioritize what features to work on and how imperfect do you want your design to be? Versus for the project you do in school, the design can typically be perfect if you want to spend the time on it. Another one, when you're working in the company, you might need to work on or design for all the use cases, all the edge cases, so that the engineers will have a sense of what to build. Versus in school, you will design mainly for the golden flow because it's the most important flow and the elements on screen are probably the ones that you cherry pick so that they can look good in your design mock in order for you to present it on your portfolio, which might not always be the case for work. So those are two big categories you can easily miss if you don't work with an engineer, which is mostly the case in school. Number two, because you're working on the project by yourself or with other design students, you don't work with a PM, a product manager. When you don't work with them, you don't get to understand the business requirements or the company metrics. Example number one, in school, you might design interfaces that solves a problem. So maybe an app that helps you search for your favorite sneakers. Versus working as a product designer, you might need to design interfaces to improve some search related metrics. Like when I was at Pinterest as an intern, I worked on a project to improve DAS, daily active searcher, this particular metrics. So what kind of design that I can come up with to improve this metric? That will be my work. So one is more of a function related design that you might end up designing a search experience. And the other one is more about how to get more people to search every day, a more nuanced and more specific case. Secondly, Working with a product manager will give you a different mindset, one that ties to company profits or revenue. So in school, for the project that you work on, the goal of design is to solve a problem, to make something easier. Say you are trying to design a new browsing experience for a shopping app. So the goal of your design is to make browse items easier, right? So if you work with a product manager, your mindset will shift or extend beyond what you currently know, what the current goal of design is. The goal of design will not stop at making the browsing experience easier. Instead, the path can continue. When you make the browsing experience better, there should be more people place an order, right? The more people place an order, that means it will generate more revenues for the company. The company will make more money. And that will actually complete the product cycle. Your design will help the business. There will be a second mindset that you learn or adopt when you work with a product manager to solve business problems. For most of the school projects, you solve real world problems, right? You're identifying a problem, a pain point, some frustration that you deal with in real life, and then you come up with a design in the interface format, in the digital design format to address those problems. But when you work with PMs, you might get to solve business problems. For example, if I open the DoorDash app, 
you can look at the landing screen, there will be some banners on top. Some of the design might be how do you design the banner to position the graphic within the banner, to position the banner in relation to other section of the app, to make more users to click into it to buy this product, for example. Driving users to perform that sequence of actions will be one of the examples of how design can help solve business problems, not just real world problems. And that's something that you get to do, get to design, get to work on when you work with a product manager. And the missing piece number three is about prioritizing skills, which will highly based upon the fact that you get to work with engineers, and product managers. When you work with both of them, you technically live in three worlds. One, the PM world. Second, the engineering world. And third, your own design world. PM has business problems. Engineering have their technical debt to figure out to make the app architecture better. And for design, you have your own design polish. You want to push out. You want to make the app look better, feel better, interact better. And all these will compile into a to-do list for your team. But you only have this many engineers and this much time. What are you going to do? What will you do first? What will you cut? What would you like to sacrifice? That's where you will get to learn and practice your prioritization skills. And when those two conditions, working with PM and Eng, don't exist, you don't have such a huge list, which means you might not get to learn how to do that. Or maybe you get to prioritize something when you're doing your group projects. But I don't think they're that comparable because they will require a totally different amount of thinking. So that sums up the three missing pieces, the three elephants in the room that I need to address and to tell you guys about the school did not prepare me for. After I graduated from Art Center, I did 22 interviews. I literally got asked about how I work with engineers, how I work with PMs. Luckily, I had done some internships that I have worked with them before so that I get to elaborate and talk about my experience working with them to sufficiently answer those questions. I really need to give concrete examples. For example, I might say I work with both iOS engineers and Android engineers and for them, I need to export different assets and work with them to figure out which file format is the best to export to build into the app. Or I would say I work really closely with software engineers to check with them on the progress every two days, if not every day, and see how is it going. And also hold design reviews to see the design marks versus the actual implementation and see if anything is off to make sure I hold the quality bar. They both might sound like really simple answers. They kind of are, but hiring managers cannot assume what you know, especially like fresh grad. The risk is high for hiring new grads. So they have to make sure you actually know it by hearing you so that they can confirm. Okay, Justine actually knows what he's talking about. So, without working with any software engineers or any product managers in school projects, how do you get to answer those questions? Well, you don't, but you can always prepare for it. For example, you can Google what software engineers do and see how they collaborate with designers so that you know what is expected, how their collaboration works, and then you can have a basic understanding of it and then you can tell that story to the recruiter, to the hiring managers. And you can do the same thing, repeat the same thing for product managers. You can dig deeper into the information that I just talked about, like the different image sizes for different platforms, iOS versus Android, or in what cases that is better to use MP4 versus Lottie Animation, PNG versus JPEG. So at least in the interview, you can say, I did not work with a software engineer in school for this project, but if I were to work with one because this is an iOS app, I will export the graphic assets into 1x, 2x, and 3x. And also for this particular splash screen, it's better to use Lottie animation because it loads faster, it prevents the black screen probably in the, in the startup. For this search function, it will take some time from the front end to fetch data through the back end so that I included an interstitial screen to make waiting not as painful for users so the entire ex user experience is, is better. And also I will prioritize doing this over this and then do that first, but not this one. If I have more time, then I will do this, this, and this. And then you will surprise your hiring manager. Oh, this new grad is good, I need to hire him. Any, any of these will help your hiring manager to form a good impression of you as a UX designer, as a product designer, and your work ethics. So overall, now you should have a general understanding of why and how the structure of a design program or design school 
will not fully prepare you for design interviews. So to sum it up in this video, I included three missing pieces that school did not offer and how you can try to learn some of those by yourself to make yourself a more rounded UX designer or product designer so that you might be able to ace your next interview. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the own. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Tschüss.